Hello, once more from the Reykjavik in Island. We are here uh, making the project City in Motion, which is uh, powered by Institute of Civil Affairs, and we are cooperating with uh, with a uh, with a Landvand uh, initiative uh, initiative uh, from uh, from uh, Reykjavik. And today we got we want we are gonna speak with. Uh, Aldor uh, from the uh, from the Landwald uh, initiative uh, from from Iceland. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. Uh, can you tell me you, you have prepared some presentations for us? Can you show it to, to the public to the to people from Poland? Uh, because there are there are big big questions. One, one big question is what for is uh, the. Uh, environmental organization in Iceland. We were reading um, many, many things, many publications in the internet about Iceland, that there is uh, so uh, environmental friendly country. So, so what do you do in this country if this is uh, so, so environmental friendly? It, this is a very com common misconception. Uh, Iceland has one of the largest uh, carbon footprint in the world uh, per capita. Uh, we have one of the highest consumption footprints in the world. Uh, uh, our resource con consumption is very high. Uh, this is just, uh, I would say, uh, almost deliberate greenwashing of Iceland. Um, we do have beautiful nature. Uh, and I think people misconceive uh, Iceland as being very environment friendly because we have so much of untouched wilderness. Uh, still, uh, but the explanation for that is that not that we are so environmentally friendly, it is uh, that there are so few people here and the island is so big. Yes, so, so let us see the presentation about what do, what do you do about your organization? Yes, uh, so I will try to be quick, uh, but I have somewhere around 70 sites. That's um, great. <laughs> we like your own presentations because we are all, all keen on the, uh, the, the, the environmental uh, organization and, and the, the, the environmental friendly uh, lifestyle. So, yeah. So maybe I will start with uh, my name, which is Öldur Önnu Magnusdóttir. Uh, my first name is Öldur. Uh, my mother's first name is Anna. And because of some complicated grammatical rules in Iceland, then her first name is my second uh, name, but uh, it changes. Even if it's Anna, then it becomes Anna because I am her daughter. It's like, because of the grammar, the words change a lot. And then my father's first name is Magnus. And then the last part means daughter, daughter. So I am the daughter. I am Öder, daughter of Anna and Magnus. And I'm the general director of Landwelt, which is the biggest and oldest environmental organization in Iceland. Uh, I will maybe skip this. Uh, I just show this usually. Uh, it's a cartoon from a climate summit. And I just show this to remind all of us that we are not only campaigning for a better environment, we are campaigning for a better society. This is the reason that we want a better environment, is because we want a better society in the long term. So, uh, you asked why, why have an environmental NGO in Iceland? Why have an environmental NGO uh, at all? Uh, and the roles of environmental NGOs are to talk very loudly at meetings when no one listens. It's to come up with great ideas about a better society that no one takes notice of. It's being the subject of frustration for internet trolls. This one is very important. Well, yes, this is very important. What, should, what do they do? What would they, they do in their lives if there are no <laughs> organizations like this? Yeah. yeah. They would yeah. have nothing to do and become uh, depressed and suicidal. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, to be cute and cuddly for everyone else to say, look at those cute hippies at Lundgren. They're trying to save the world, which is unquote impossible. Uh, no, just to be serious, uh, that was my attempt of, uh, at being funny. Uh, the role of environmental NGOs is, of course, to lead the change to a better society. 
To do that, we need to nudge and nudge and nudge some more. This means to take uh, very small steps in the right directions. They may be very small, so small that we don't almost don't notice them, but they are. They have to be in the right direction. Uh, we try to point to inconsistencies and flawed argu arguments again and again and again, uh, both in the media, with politicians and the public, uh, regarding natural resources, climate change, climate denial, uh, and nature, and how important it is. Uh, one of our roles is to be the voice of those who do not speak, that is nature. Uh, because nature doesn't speak, we don't know what it wants. Uh, but we assume it wants to uh, be left alone. We assume it wants to be uh, as it has been before and develop uh, according to its own accord, not uh, through our uh, destruction. Uh, and uh, we lose most of the battles uh, because we are introducing a new way of thinking. And it is very important, uh, like the woman from the bus company said, uh, we need sort of a culture shift, we need a new way of thinking, we need to think about energy as a very finite resource, resource. we need to think about sustainability all the time. And this is, uh, introducing new ways of thinking is of course very challenging, uh, but we will not move forward if we don't do that. Uh, uh, again, why are we doing this in Iceland? Uh, we feel, probably in other countries, the environmental go governance is even worse, but in Iceland it could be much, much, much better. <coughs> uh, there are, as in all countries, very strong ties between politicians and people in power, other people in power, uh, other people with money and people that want to uh, abuse and use uh, natural resources uh, and not do that sustainab sustainably. Uh, our challenge is, of course, still, like I said, uh, consumerism, uh, which is a very big problem in Iceland. Uh, lack of respect for the finite resources uh, that nature gives us, uh, and the current mindset of eternal growth, that we can just grow and grow and grow and grow and, grow and take and take and take more from nature. Uh, uh, I'd like to point out this cover of Time magazine. Time magazine always chooses a uh, person of the year uh, each year, uh, but one year they chose planet of the year. Uh, and this was because the earth was endangered. Uh, there were so many issues uh, that threatened uh, life on this planet because of human action. Uh, and I think people talk about environmental issues like these are new issues, like this is just something that came up and we just have to wait just a few more years then we will have a technical solution to this new issue. But what year, what year this was? Yeah, this, that is the question. What year do you think it was? 2008. 2008, what do you think? But something similar, or maybe, or maybe even earlier. Two thousand and two. Two thousand and two. Nineteen. Nineteen. Nineteen ninety. Nineteen ninety. So you were closest. It was nineteen eighty-eight. Uh, That's so when. It was the dangerous times. So thanks God, then now we got, we got we have two thousand uh, two thousand twenty-three. Yeah. There was very dangerous time, I see. Yeah, yeah. It's just a joke. Now we have uh, the, the, the I was just kidding. The, now we have uh, as uh, similar times, but uh, not many people realize this this danger. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, it's always being discussed as this new issue uh, that we just need to find technical solutions to. But it's not a new issue, and we have been trying to develop technical solutions that have failed. Uh, we are losing more and more uh, of our ecosystems. We are losing, uh, we are uh, raising emissions, CO2 emissions every year. We're not doing anything right. And we've been tackling this for 40 years. Uh, in 1988, people knew enough about the dangers uh, that we impose to the world uh, or to life on the planet to put it on the cover of Time magazine. 
we do not have the excuse anymore to say that this is so new or this is just a niche issue. Uh, a little bit about uh, our organization. We were founded in 1969 and we are the largest and uh, oldest environmental organization in Iceland. We are historically based in land restoration. So it's a big problem in Iceland uh, that we lose soil and vegetation, mostly because of uh, uh, early forestry and sheep grazing, but also because of the harsh climate and uh, the very volatile uh, soil that we have. Uh, this is an old picture from around where Landwelt was founded. Uh, and you see this strange pile of mud there with the grass on the top. Uh, so what happened there is that we lost the trees, we lost uh, the top vegetation, which meant that there came cracks uh, down to the soil. Uh, we have strong winds, so the soil blew away, the cracks got bit bigger and we lost more and more vegetation. Uh, and there we used to have more than one person height of soil that we now have lost. All that is left is this little island of mud there. And it's going to be disappearing as well. They're standing on the. This is the rock. They're standing on the rock. Uh, I don't know if it's rock, but uh, at least that's the level of uh, soil erosion that we had there. And it's going to take uh, hundreds and thousands of year, years to get back that, that soil. And so this, this is a very serious problem. Uh, we have uh, so many man made deserts uh, in Iceland. Uh, but you don't really realize it because you just come to Iceland and you see this barren landscape and you think it's always been like that but, and that's not true. In some places it, it is true but in most places not. Uh, and this is where Landwelt started. Uh, uh, through governmental effort uh, and also through organizations like ours this is getting uh, less of a problem also because we have fewer sheep now than we had. We have only uh, little bit less than twice as many sheep as people in Iceland. Uh, and uh, before humans moved here, uh, 25, it's thought that 25% of the island was covered by birch forest. Now it's uh, somewhere a little bit above 1%, maybe 1.5% 1 that is covered in forest. So this is of course something we want to uh, go back to. Uh, but Landwelt has changed over the years uh, and now we are involved in most environmental issues that uh, are connected to Iceland in some way. Uh, nature conservation, uh, climate change, sustainability. Uh, we have two big pillars of, of work which is uh, environmental education uh, and environmental policy making. So we try to be involved in uh, Policy making, education, and public discussion on the environment and natural resources. Uh, we have uh, around 6,000 members, uh, which we are quite happy with. Uh, we have a big project that is called the Eco Schools Project, uh, and 180 schools in Iceland participate in our educate, environmental education project. And then we have member associations, that means uh, other associations that are members of the uh, So children at school can see your point of view and can compare it to the point of view, for example, of their parents. Mm -hmm. It's a very good idea that we educate the young generation so as they can change the world in the future, in the way that you see it. Mm -hmm. But they will not be able to change anything if they are just meeting a stagnant society that is not ready for change. So we really need to both educate them but also do our best to make the society as susceptible to the change that they want to implement. Uh, so we cannot just wait for them to grow up and uh, yeah that they will find yeah. again yeah. Yeah, they will find they, they will fight. Uh, we just uh, educate, say how it should be, and yeah. then they will. They will do it. Uh, do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, not, it's not working like this. It's yeah. We need a sustainable society. Yes. As you say, sustainable yes. society. Yeah. Uh, and our income 
uh, is uh, mainly through this eco school project and the member fees. Uh, we also get uh, some general grants, uh, and then we have other smaller projects that we get grants for, uh, and some teaching and, and stuff that we get. But the most important ones are the eco schools and the member fees. Uh, we are a non governmental. Uh, organization which is owned by the 6,000 members. Uh, we have a, a yearly assembly uh, which selects the board of Landwelt. It's 10 people in the board uh, and the members uh, in the general assembly, they are the highest authority uh, of the organization. So they have the last word. In between yearly assemblies, it's the board that has the last word. Uh, so they make all the strategic decisions for the organization. Uh, <coughs> here are just some nice pictures of uh, the staff and the, yeah, uh, actually an old board. I will have to take a new picture of the board. Uh, almost none of these people are still in the board. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you want to continue or Yes, yes, it's very interesting. Yeah. It is very interesting. I've got uh, some question for you. Can you share the story uh, behind your involvement in environmental activism? How did you get started and what started? What, what inspires you personally to start uh, act uh, for the society, sustainable society? Yeah, I um, started uh, or I became interested in uh, environmental issues as a teenager and that's why I'm so annoyed when people start to discuss this as a new issue because when I was a teenager and I became worried about climate change which was then being discussed publicly nobody cared uh, and I just felt completely desperate and completely alone because people were just like yeah 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 that's just something far far in the future uh, so I have always been uh, interested uh, and trying to do my best, um, but I always um, I've always thought that I want the world to be a better place because I was in it, not the worst place because I was in it, uh, and uh, I'm not sure I've succeeded yet, but uh, having a healthy environment is just so logical. Uh, I have a PhD in biochemistry, so I'm very data driven and, and data oriented uh, and it just makes no sense not to act uh, on environmental issues. So it's both uh, emotional uh, because it's wrong, it's just wrong to, to create a worse uh, future for, for the generations to come, but it's also completely illogical, so it also just comes from a logical like stone cold facts yes. that it just doesn't make sense not to try to yeah. make this better uh, and i'm very annoyed by fallacies and illogical action <coughs> yeah so i would say that that is also big not just so the there's uh, cal mathematical calculations but, yeah. and the, but on the other hand the emotions mm -hmm. heart and mind it decides yeah. it decides to to, to act great so what what does I, I can see uh, what you what what does uh, the land world do and you doing with the land world? You can continue your your presentations. Very impressive. Okay. Uh, so everybody knows the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, we use these in in our work, and we think that it's very important to look at the sustainability goals together not sort of try to pick one out and say we're working towards this one yeah. because a uh, healthy environment will lead to better health and it will lead to less hunger uh, and hopefully less poverty but we have nevertheless highlighted uh, a few of the uh, goals that we work directly towards and not surprisingly we uh, work towards uh, goals 12 through 15, uh, which are responsible consumption and, and production, uh, climate action, life on water and life on land, uh, so environmental issues. 
uh, but also quality education, which is goal number four. And that is where our uh, environmental uh, education comes in. Uh, we have a very strong program in, within the eco-schools uh, of sustainability education. And the eco-schools are uh, judged by UNESCO to be the most important tool for sustainability, implementing sustainability education. Uh, tell me, what, what, this, what from these goals, what, what uh, part of these uh, actions are uh, your favorite ones? What, what, you, what, what, you specific, what, what is the specific uh, things that you, uh, you, you see as the most uh, important and, most, and, and you are pa passionate in uh, the most? Uh, of the sustainability goals. Yes, all these two sustainability, sustainability goals that we. They, uh, they are all very important, but I, uh, I really like the way the goals were put forth because it was a bottom-up approach uh, where many, many, many people uh, agreed on what the goals should be. Uh, my least favorite goal. Uh, Beside, uh, besides goal number eight, I think, which is uh, uh, economic growth, uh, which I think is a horrible goal to have. Uh, another one that I don't like is, is uh, the sub goals of climate action. I think climate action is really important, but the sub goals are just, they say nothing. Uh, but I don't know, maybe number four and number 15. They're, yeah. Good contenders. Yeah, and uh, which which from the uh, which which uh, parts of the um, of the works of uh, from the from from your organizations are your favorite? Which parts of, of the work of the of your organization? Uh, maybe we should go here. Oh, yeah. which is uh, our main focus is. Uh, I cannot say which ones are my favorite. Uh, they are all extremely important. So the members of Lapvent, uh, they decide on our main focuses every three years. And then the General Assembly uh, approves uh, the focus areas that the members have selected for Lapvent. Uh, one of our biggest projects is to raise a Highland Park, uh, in, in, uh, raise a national park in the Icelandic Highlands. This is a very big project that we have uh, worked really hard on. Uh, we have made some progress and we have made some steps backwards. Uh, I think I'm very proud of uh, the environmental education projects that we do. Uh, but also I think uh, the work that we have uh, done in the last couple of years in demonstrating that nature conservation and climate action need to go hand in hand. Uh, I think this is a very important point that we have succeeded uh, for the most part in coming across. Great. So yeah, these are our main focus areas. So nature conservation, environmental education, mm. climate change and sustainable society. And then we have mm. actions between, behind each, each of those. Yes. So they are uh, the same as, the, as, the import, as their importance is the same. Yes. And they one cannot be uh, cannot be uh, made without another yes. because it is all connected. Yes, like in the nature, like in nature, and like with the sustainability nature. goals, uh, and uh, there is no hierarchy. It's just uh, a mesh of uh, connections. Yes. Uh, yeah, uh, so the tools that we use, we are not uh, uh, an environmental education that goes uh, out and cleans beaches or plants trees. We do very little of that. Uh, we collaborate with uh, organizations that do that, but we don't do that ourselves. Uh, we are mainly a lobbyist uh, organization, so we're lobbying for the environment uh, and we do the education. So our tools are mainly to participate in decision making. Uh, you saw yesterday our parliament, that's the parliament building, so we try to yes, participate yes. in policy and, and uh, decision making regarding the environment. So you come here very often and, and you come here by bike to the parliament. Yeah, or bus. 
or walk. walk. It's not that far, yes. so sometimes I walk. Um, and then, uh, of course, there's uh, public relations. We appear uh, on TV and radio a lot, uh, in the local news. We write uh, opinion editorials. Uh, we have a lot of events. We have presentations are, uh, uh, at events held by others, and then we have our, our own events. And then, of course, uh, a lot in social media. Uh, I will just skip this, but just a take-home message, uh, the Oris Agreement is free and important. Um, I don't know if you want to go on? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, so, just to tell you a little bit about sustainability education that we are trying to help schools in Iceland implement. Uh, uh, sustainability education means that uh, the knowledge that you have uh, is not more important than, that, than how you use that knowledge. So if you gain knowledge, you need to gain the tools to use the knowledge as well. So this means that you learn something, uh, but you also need to learn how it impacts justice and human rights. What does it have to do with democracy and collaboration? Uh, you have to learn how to inform, educate and empower others with the knowledge that you have. Uh, we use uh, multidisciplinary projects and creative teaching methods. It's just not a teacher standing in front of a board and, and rambling on. Uh, uh, and important parts of sustainability education are empowerment in action and global awareness. I can ask some question. How do children react for your education? For example, if you say, uh, if uh, someone say from from organization say to the to the children that it is uh, better for society to go by bike or by or by bus to the to, to school, uh, do they say it's okay? We will say it to our parents, or they say, for example. Uh, my dad says that is uh, it is not true that what you say, and, and I I won't listen to this. What's the reaction of children? Um, so the basis of the project is more to get get the kids and the whole school society to take actions themselves uh, rather than us telling them what to do, uh, and some of the actions that they want to take. So they have a committee that decides what they want to do. Uh, yeah. And the project evolves around helping them to do that and uh, making sure that they actually reach the goals that they set. What yeah. actions can make can children make, for example? What for means? example, walk or bike to school. Uh, yeah. For example, make sure that they only put the food that they are going to eat on their plate. Yeah. Um, they can uh, pressure school authorities to reduce red meat in school foods. Uh, they can pressure school authorities to reduce the number of parking spaces so it becomes more difficult. So they can put a lot of pressure on society, but they can also take actions themselves. But it's important to uh, put it in the right perspective, not to put too much responsibility on, on them, because they are children yeah. and they do not have authority. You must change the planet, you must uh, yeah. so it's all the parking spaces and, and, and make, make uh, yeah, yeah. someone new. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. But all of us can speak to people around us that have more power than us. And that applies to children as well. Uh, and they can uh, put pressure on everyone else and they can decide themselves what they want to do. For example, bike or walk to school, which is completely possible for, for most school children in Iceland. And yeah, it's a very good, uh, good, attitude, good attitude. Yeah, it's a, we really like this uh, project, uh, and uh, empowerment of children is very important. Uh, yeah, I'll just skip this. Yeah, we got some great news yesterday. Oh. So a part of the Eco Schools project is uh, a project that is called Young Reporters for the environment uh, and it's an international project run by the same organization that runs the EcoSchool project. Uh, the goal is to empower 
uh, 11 to 25 year old students to learn, research and educate and inform others on environmental issues. Uh, and the students participate in a national and international competition. Uh, and it, it, it's just, a, just about uh, providing information in some form about environmental issues. Uh, this piece there, uh, it's supposed to be a birthday cake uh, mm. and it's made out of trash. These are popular yes. brands yes. in Iceland. So uh, the name of the piece is Congratulations Humanity. Yeah. Uh, since 2019, uh, Iceland has won awards in the international competition every year. Uh, I really would like to show you the a uh, photo that won uh, this year, and we just got the news yesterday, so when we went to uh, see the bikes. Is it okay if we take a break and I will, yes. I will find this? Yes, yes, of course, of course. There it is. Okay, what is, what, what, what is he eating? What is this? He is eating uh, chicken, I think. Okay. He's eating meat. And the name of the photo is, we don't care, do you? He's just standing on all the consumption. Rubbish, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, if if you should run it, you will. Uh, if you will not care about the environment, the environment will look badly. But you will also look yeah. badly because the bad environment isn't good for you. So yes. you will look like this. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's very very smart. Very smart. Yeah. Okay, we don't care, do you? No, I, I care, I will not look like this. <laughs> it's an extremely strong... Uh, he's only 17 and he did everything himself. He's the photographer, he is the model, he did his makeup. Uh, he organized the whole thing uh, together with his teacher. Yeah. So we're really proud of this. Uh, and. Is it one of the uh, kids from the school that you run this product? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, so this is uh, thanks to you, thanks to your project, we have a uh, young activist who will save the, the planet. Uh, if yeah. only we can give them the chance. So if only now give them the chance. They are well educated yeah. and now it's time to, to, to act for them. Let them act, yeah? Yeah. You know, it is said that, that uh, Hard people, hard, hard times make strong people. Yeah. Uh, strong people, uh, uh, and this uh, good times. Uh, strong people make make uh, good times. Uh, good times make weak people. But there is two ways, I think. Good times can make weak people, for example, who who don't care, mm. but they can also make well educated, sensitive, mm -hmm. and uh, caring people. Mm -hmm. And those people can make the sustainable times. Mm -hmm. So this is about what, what happens in Iceland. That, mm -hmm. that uh, there, there, there are good times. People can afford many things. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a growing economy. Mm -hmm. But now it's time to choose. Mm -hmm. Will we will, will be strong, weak people and uh, destroy everything, yeah. or we will be well educated, sensitive people, and mm -hmm. we we will make things better. Mm -hmm. So as in Poland, mm -hmm. so as in all of the, the, the world. Yeah. Yes, great. Uh, and now I will look if uh, there's uh, some other questions. So yeah, mm -hmm. I, I got more questions. Yes, in, uh, environmental friendly tourism. Uh, I think big topic in, in Iceland. Can you tell us more about it? Uh, is, are you, uh, does your organization uh, works for Create this environmental friendly tourism? Um, yes and no. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's such a thing as environmentally friendly tourism. Uh, it's like saying that, that electric cars are environmentally friendly. They're not that environmentally friendly. They yeah. are. They are better than uh, diesel <laughs> uh, gas cars. Yeah. Uh, but they're not environmentally friendly. Um, uh, and I think in very few cases, tourism can be said to be environmentally friendly. Yeah. Um, especially if you have to take a plane, which you have to do if you want to come to Iceland. 
then your CO2 footprint is already very big. And you have to, to be able to claim that your uh, trip was at least not harmful for, for nature and the environment. Yeah, but... uh, then you have to do a lot uh, here uh, to make up for, for, for that emission. Uh, but we can make tourism uh, environmental friendlier. It can be less destructive for the environment. Mm. Uh, and for that, uh, infrastructure and controlling uh, where tourists go, uh, how many we have, uh, how they get here and how they get about the island. That's very important and that is something that we have been emphasizing us. Yeah, that's right. And other topics, what are the main problems that you face with, for example, with changing this uh, attitudes for, uh, of the society for more environmental friendly? For example, uh, I have heard that there are some problems which, uh, with, with uh, making uh, the railway from, from, from Reykjavik to, to, to Keflavik. And can you share with us this, this kind of problems? What, what problems do you face in you know, with, with uh, building the environmental friendly friendly society and so as environmental friendly civilization. Yeah, as I said in the beginning, it's just the uh, short term thinking. Uh, everyone wants to uh, be better off financially uh, mm -hmm. tomorrow than they were today. Uh, everyone wants to grow their economic wealth and uh, that is just not sustainable uh, and I think right now uh, both as I said the very strong ties of people who think short term and have a lot of money and want to have more money mm -hmm. to politicians is a very huge problem and I think uh, globally politicians have failed uh, they have failed us uh, they should have acted 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and they did not. Uh, they instead chose to go the route, the easy route, uh, together with the polluters, together with the fossil fuel industry. Um, they were supposed to think long term, supposed to think about future generations, supposed to think about nature and what is best for all of us. They did not. Uh, so we think, say that this is a uh, uh, a problem also because we are a very small society. Uh, it is very easy for uh, a relatively small player to have a big influence uh, if they have vested interest in a project that can delay the competition through uh, several means which are very easy in a, in a small society to do. Yeah, I know. Oh, so we, are, we were asking about problems. Mm -hmm. Now maybe ask about the biggest successes. If you can say, what was the biggest successes in your career of the environmental activist? Uh, what, what is the main, main, main things that, that you can uh, remember if you, were, what, when, if you were wondering what for I, I was doing it? Uh, what would be the main things? Mm -hmm. So as I said in the beginning, uh, uh, being in nature conservation and environmental campaigning, it's just loss after loss after loss after loss. And you just have to try to remember like the good things and that you're moving things or trying to move things in the right direction very slowly. Yes. Uh, and it becomes very tiring to lose all the time. Uh, it's like uh, being a part of a football club that is very bad, but it has to mm -hmm. stay in Premier League all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, they will get a little bit better. Uh, with time. But, but sometimes you win, win, sometimes you win. Sometimes what was win. The, 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 the wins, the, what was the winner, win, the winner battle, the battle that you win, that you yeah. remember the most? Yeah, uh, we, we have had a very uh, successful project that we started in 2019, uh, that was called, oh, here it is, uh, Fossil Free Iceland. Uh, so we had a climate activist group that organized this um, and in the picture here uh, this happened in december 2019. Uh, right. it's like a funeral yes so this was the, the, the... yes this happened 
in 2035. So uh, 20, no, 10 years from now, this happened. Uh, we held the funeral of the last oil barrel. So we were saying goodbye to the last oil barrel. And we had a real priest, this is a real priest, who agreed to take part in this activism with us. And we had this flower decoration, maybe you remember from yesterday, there was a flower decoration in front of the dead president. Yes, yes, in the monument of your president, yes, yeah. there is also the flower decoration. And it says there on the ribbon uh, in the flower decoration, uh, uh, rest in peace, uh, regards Landwind. Uh, and in this picture, he is saying like this, ashes to ashes, dust to dust to the oil barrel. Uh, we had a, there isn't, he's giving the eulogy and he's just saying, yeah, we thank you for the time. We thank you for your service. Now it's time to say goodbye. Just no hard feelings, but we're done now. We're not going to use you anymore. And then we had a choir uh, that's on Psalms. Uh, and then we took uh, the oil barrel on a bicycle uh, to the par parliament. This is this is the where the flower decoration was. Uh, in. So we first we put the oil barrel in front of the parliament, and then of course the security guards came out. They were like, "Ah, what are you doing?" <laughs> they because they did not. Want they put that you you want to burn the yes, parliament yes, by the yes. oil house. Yeah. 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 Oh, there was nothing in it. So we had to move it to the to the statue of the then president, and then we we made demands. So we made demands here. Uh, what we want to happen? We want uh, uh, fossil the import of fossil fuel cars to be banned from twenty twenty three. So now we already have twenty twenty three. This hasn't been uh, realized. And then we said we want all domestic flight to be electri electrified by some year and we want all the fisheries uh, to reduce their uh, use of fossil fuels and be completely fossil fuel free by a year something la 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 so these were our demands and what happened is that the uh, government actually did this so they said we're going to be fossil fuel free in 2040 so i would say this was one of our biggest su successes so by 2040, yeah. there will be no fossil fuels here on Iceland. So That's everything the, will be powered by the electricity, electricity yeah. which comes from the renewable yeah. sources. Yeah. That would be great, a great, uh, great success. Yeah, but now, um, now we're thinking. Uh, so for airplanes, uh, it's quite unrealistic that this is going to happen. For domestic airplanes, it's okay, because there's short distances, we're probably going to have electrical yes. airplanes uh, in the very near future. Mm -hmm. So that's very realistic. But uh, airplanes that go between countries, especially across the Atlantic, are probably not going to be electric or use electric fuels. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how realistic it is, but for all other sectors, everything on land, mm -hmm. we should yes. be able and to do that. And the country. Yeah, we should, be. we should just decide to do it and then we can do it. Yes, yes so that's great. I, I wish you all more, more and more successes like this, uh, yes, so as uh, your, your country and your, your hometown would be better and better place and more sustainable more sustainable society, for more sustainable civilization. Mm -hmm. And if it succeeds in one island, maybe some all of the world will see they did it, they still alive. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can do it also. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much for Thank the interview. Well. Thank you. Thank you.